<laughs> and the FNAF community is like the one community I have left where I'm drama free in, so let's quickly move on. Well, that was short lived. Still sucks. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. She is such a bad bitch, though! The brand new game in a franchise that really should have ended by, oh, I don't know, like three entries ago. Well, let's be real, realistically, it should have ended after the first one. Truly, though, despite all that's happened, I'm still a big fan of the Five Nights at Freddy's series. I think a majority of the games are fun, and the setting and world they take place in is very intriguing. And even though it's obvious the creator of the franchise, Scott Cawthon, was making things up as he went along, to the point where the story is incredibly convoluted since we now have a game where the premise is that there's a company called Fazbear Entertainment who are trying to clean up their poor image after some weird Christian guy made a bunch of horror games about their franchise, which are the original series of FNAF games, but they also might be true as there's what's basically a rogue computer virus sneaking around and possessing people in the real world to kidnap kids and... I I'm just gonna stop there. But when you're like eight games in, you gotta up the stakes somehow. You know, you can't just have another simple point and click horror game. You've been doing that shtick since 2014. Things need to evolve in a way. And just how did they go about that? Well, now we have FNAF Security Breach, a large open world exploration game where you can freely roam an entire giant mall as animatronics and a security guard chase you down. It's quite the leap, don't you think? This project was developed by Steel Wool Studios, a small indie studio who have actually had previous experience with the franchise, also developing one of the previous entries, Help Wanted. The VR game that was partially a remake of the original three games and partially a soft reboot, to open up the series more, so they don't have to keep making games revolving around one event that happened in the 80s. This seems like the perfect concept. Help One, in my opinion, is the best game in the franchise. Sure, it lacks a little polish, but it more than makes up for it by just being what's basically a fun collection of minigames, taking inspiration from the entire FNAF universe. Now Scott's just given them a bigger budget and the freedom to create a whole new game. Then the game got delayed. Then the game got delayed again. Then the game came out. What the fuck happened here? That's what I want to discuss today. Let's go over FNAF Security Breach, what worked about it, what didn't work, what they could learn to improve upon in the future, and most importantly, the game's biggest issue that doomed it from the start, its overambition. I was very worried about Security Breach. See, it was first announced in August of 2019, with a release date of late 2020. From this point on, updates on the game were incredibly slow. Basically, if we ignore the leaks from Funko, we were only given official updates on it every few months. And even then, they were mostly just cryptic messages or concept art. You couldn't really tell what it was trying to do or what kind of game it would end up being. Again, despite being first announced in August of 2019, it took us over a year later in September of 2020 to be given our first look at the new entry. Even then, it was incredibly brief and showed no actual gameplay, just a couple in-engine overview shots. After this, the game got delayed, with Scott claiming COVID and it simply being much bigger than expected as reasons for it needing more time in the oven. In the next year and a half, we were drip-fed news. A graphic showcase here, a teaser image there. It wasn't until, well, after another delay, in October of 2021, for us to be given the final release date, December 16th, 2021. Yes, we were given the release date two months before the game came out. But hey, Scott said it was pushed back because it was getting so much bigger than anticipated. That's gotta be a good thing, right? Oh, uh... Yeah, apparently the game sucked. It's odd, I heard constant mixed things about it. A lot of people were saying it was a broken, buggy mess that was not worth the wait, while others touted it as one of their favorite games of all time. I initially wasn't even planning on playing the game for myself. Again, the trailers did nothing to show me why I should be interested. But I was just so curious as to why the reception would be so extremely varied, and decided to try it out for myself. So after downloading it at 80 fucking gigabytes, what did I think? This game is way too ambitious for its own good and it was doomed to feel from the start. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach stars Gregory, a young boy who is locked inside Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex overnight, and must escape the wrath of the security guard, this lady called Vanessa, who appears to have the entire building under her control, turning the once nice animatronic mascots into their security mode, which means they kill you basically. All but Glamrock Freddy, who for some reason doesn't appear to be affected by this for some reason, and with that he decides to help you on your journey of surviving the night. But oh no. What, what, what is this? Who, who is this mysterious white rabbit roaming the mall? That sure is strange. I, I sure do hope we receive some sort of payoff with this character. That's it, that's the story. It never really goes much beyond this simple premise for all but one of the endings. 
For a franchise where a majority of the interest from the fandom comes from picking apart the stories and lore for each entry, I was genuinely shocked how little was going on here. It was way too simple for its own good. I think a big issue here simply comes down to the protagonist, Gregory. I get that they wanted you to feel the helplessness of being a little kid by themselves at night with a killer on the loose. That's pretty scary in concept. But I seriously think that the game would have benefited greatly from featuring a silent protagonist. Gregory is annoying, in two ways. Terrible job, super shit! First of all, that he doesn't act anything, or really sound all that much like a kid. The way he's written is just... off, you know? Okay, but you better be careful moving around. I don't want to be crushed and twisted into a meat pretzel. <laughs> yeah, that's what a kid would say. The sure are known for their love of metaphors and intense situations. And second of all, he doesn't fucking ask about what's going on here. This would make sense if he didn't have almost constant access to Glamrock Freddy, who clearly seems to know about a lot of the stuff going on here. But Gregory almost never asks him any questions about what's going on, and when he does, he never asks a follow-up question or wants Freddy to elaborate, despite Freddy being as vague as possible in certain areas. I know what this is. I have been here before. She brought me here. I found myself for the first time when I cleared the path. I am not me. Uh, excuse me, uh, Freddy, is it? I'm, I'm gonna have to stop you right there, because I have a couple questions. Just, what is this? What, what do you mean you know what this is? Are, are you referring to Vanessa? She brought you here? Y you're probably talking about Vanessa, right, but I just, I'd just like you to confirm for clarity's sake. And, and what do you mean, find myself? What What's down here? You are not you? That, that's pretty vague, you know? It's... It's been a really stressful night. I'd really appreciate it if you were just up front with me here, Freddy. Most other FNAF games can have a story of this caliber, because not only are they much smaller in scope, not only do you play as a silent protagonist so you don't really consider their lack of questioning much, but because of the fixed time limit, they don't really have a ton of time to expand the plot. Which is why each of them sort of just fix it on one event, leaving it up to the fandom to figure out what it means and where it should be placed on the overall timeline. But Security Breach is a fairly big game by comparison, taking around 6 hours to beat if your only goal is to get one of the endings. But within that time and the vast array of things there are to do within it, the story rarely ever progresses much. There aren't really any reveals over time or evolutions to plot points that have been brought up in the beginning. Once again, I'm referring to the time before the 6am cutoff. The only real thing I recall being added was the introduction of Vanny about 30 minutes in. But even then, nothing is done with this if you accidentally choose the wrong pathway. There's a chance you'll only see her maybe one or two times throughout the rest of the game. For what was hyped up as being the main antagonist for the past few years, with countless teases and merchandise trying to build Vanny up, she really has little to no presence in the final game. She's not even the final boss! There's no way it was always intended to be that way, right? But I'm sure you've noticed me talking about multiple endings by now. This is something that they eventually started adding to the games. I, I want to say it started with FNAF 3, where you could get an alternate good ending depending on whether or not you did some hidden mini games. This is something that was added into future entries. I guess to give the player more incentive to replay the game and look for more clues. But when it comes to Security Breach, I actually think this approach of alternate endings is what messes up the entire story, and is what causes it to feel underwhelming. It reminds me a lot of the structure to Shadow the Hedgehog of all things, in that I get what the intent is. They want you to go through the game choosing whatever path you want to take. Do you want to fight Roxy first? How about Chica? Or Monty? Because you can choose any path you'd like, because you could be at any part of the Pizza Plex at any given time, it means they can't really predict where you're going to be throughout each hour. So the story is almost forced to take a back seat until the game gets you to a point where it knows for certain where you're going to be. And when most of the people excited for your game are looking forward to seeing where the story takes us, that's a big fucking issue. They never really get on track with this either, by the time 6am comes they give you a choice, either stay with Freddy at the pizza plex to further look into what's going on, leave forever, or go directly to Vanny to try and put a stop to her. But this genuinely came out of nowhere for me. Freddy and Gregory suddenly act like they've been on some mission to put a stop to Vanny this whole time. But no, I only saw her two fucking times in my playthrough, how does Gregory know what she's up to? But at this point the game is basically saying, alright, choose your ending. It's not really as if anything changes at this point. Again, it's basically just, there are like five or six different things you could do right now, all of varying lengths and difficulties, do whatever you like. And the shitty part is, none of the endings are satisfying. In one ending, you free Vanessa from the clutches of Glitchtrap by playing an arcade game. In another, you drive away with Freddy Fazbear by leaving through a door, all with really shittily drawn comic books. What they want you to do here is get the true ending, but none of these other ones are satisfying, so I wonder why they're even here in the first place other than just because it's tradition at this point. Hell, I'd still argue the true ending isn't satisfying either from the perspective of storytelling. 
Basically, you go under the pizza plex to find an old Freddy's location, and where you go even deeper underground to find... <gasps> Who else but Springtrap? This comes out of nowhere and is never really hinted at throughout the rest of the game. It, it, it feels to me like it was here for shock value more than anything. Again, despite being the true ending, it doesn't feel satisfying at all. You play through a buggy boss fight, only for a 15 second cutscene to play, where the giant amalgamation of animatronics comes down and pulls William Afton away. Then it's over. That, 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 that's it, they brought him in for two minutes just to kill him off. Possibly? I'm sure they'll bring him back in the next game, they can't help themselves. I really thought that Help Wanted being a soft reboot was the perfect opportunity to start fresh. Imply that while there were some truths, a majority of the previous games didn't actually happen, so now you can finally broaden your horizons and take the series in a bold new direction. Hell, if you still wanted to do this William Afton thing, I saw on Twitter the other day someone had this great suggestion. What if Vanessa is someone who saw the old rumors of the Freddy locations murdering kids and kidnapping them, and then became inspired by the work of William Afton to do that herself? Because at that point, it's still up in the air of whether or not William Afton actually is a real person who did this stuff, while still posing Vanny as a real threat and a real antagonist here. And that's also just a much scarier concept in general. It's like, it's like Ember's Ghost Squad. But it seems to me like Steel Wool, or Scott Cawthon, I don't know who wrote this thing, were more concerned about appealing to fans, shoving in everything they would want out of a FNAF game, such as throwing Springtrap in at the very end out of nowhere, and the reveal of the FNAF 6 location, basically implying that no, the FNAF games were not made up in-universe, that for the most part all happened. What was even the point in making that a thing in Help Wanted if they just went back on it? This story screams of being fucked with midway through development. It seems like it was stripped of so much, and so what we ended up with is something that's so incredibly bare bones and unengaging. But this is all just the story, you know? Despite that being what most fans care about, we still have to consider that there's a game here. Is Security Breach a bad video game? Uh, no, not bad per se, but it's nowhere near good despite having great potential. First of all, to list a positive, yes, there are positives. I think that Steel Wool did an impeccable job when it came to the design of the Pizza Plex. If there's one thing this game gets right, it's the immersion. Even when Freddy is spazzing all over the place, I still find myself engrossed in this world. You really feel like this is an actual 80s inspired mall. Everything, every kind of room is accounted for. Almost too well in a way, because there were plenty of times where I'd find myself mindlessly running into rooms, only to find out some of them literally serve no function. But I get it, it makes it more authentic and it's a cool setting for your game. I know I don't count finding a present with a fucking magnet or a plush as a good reward for exploring. At first I find myself getting lost a ton. A big issue I had is that after you get the first couple security badges, a large amount of the map becomes accessible to you. And because the game lets you go anywhere and do anything in whatever order you want, it often caused me to not realize where I was meant to be going, got lost wandering around, realize that I'm in the wrong area, and end up having to painstakingly travel all the way back to where I need to be. Thankfully the game gives us this handy dandy map that... The fuck is this? The map in this game is truly dreadful, it does not help at all when it comes to needing to know where I should go. First of all, where the fuck are the labels? There was a part where I got lost when trying to find out how to get to Chica's green room, my fault admittedly, but I got so lost that even when I figured out where I needed to go, I still had no fucking idea on how to actually traverse the map to get there myself. I think a very easy fix for this would have been to simply add labels to the map. Tell me where the atrium is. Tell me where Chica's green room is. You gotta remember, Steel Wool, that despite how embarrassingly short this game is, there are people who are gonna pick it up for a couple hours, put it down, and may not return to it for a couple days or weeks because they got other shit to do. Not everyone playing as a YouTuber needs to rush through this shit in one sitting so they can be the first to get out their theory video. And I can imagine when they come back it's gonna take them a long time to remind themselves of where everything is because this map is no help at all in functioning like a... well, <laughs> a map. They have a few little icons on it to tell you where certain things are, such as Freddy's location and charging stations and such, so how hard would it have been to add another icon that represents story missions, so people aren't just aimlessly wandering around looking like fools? Still though, the setting is great, I was very immersed in this world, Steel Wool. You should definitely be commended for that. Seems like one of the only things that was actually fully realized. Low FPS security bots and all. You know what, now that I mention it, time for bitching. These staff bots are fucking everywhere, and are the main source of... <clears throat> challenge within the game. Security Breach's idea of a fun and engaging game are plopping you in a room, scattering a bunch of these guys around in fixed movement cycles and saying, all right, go to the other side. It's just not fun, is it? A couple hours in, I realized that I was basically just playing a boring stealth game. A majority of it just features you trying to get to where you need to be to obtain a security badge, while avoiding contact with the staff bots, as they spawn in one of the three animatronics if they see you. And all the animatronics end up doing is chasing you until you find somewhere to hide. I guess I wouldn't mind that much if the AI weren't so unwieldy. 
If the entire basis of your game is reliant on the AI, then you better make sure it works right. And this shit, it don't work right. This can go from minor annoyances such as entering a room only for a staff bot to spawn right at the doorway and immediately jump scare you, to moderate annoyances like when a staff bot is doing their usual cycle only to randomly teleport to a different part right in front of you, causing it to be super hit or miss when trying to plan your movements, to fucking bullshit annoyances that soft locks the game and forces you to restart, such as the many, many, many times where I was playing and I'd have an animatronic chasing me only for me to hide somewhere and then they'd just stand there. Menacingly. <laughs> we will, we will. Usually they walk over, sleuth around for a bit, then go away on their lonesome, but sometimes, and to be fair, it only happened to me a couple times, but I'd argue it shouldn't happen at all, they'll just really like a certain spot. Or maybe they'll get stuck in between two staff bots and not know what to do. And all you can do at that point is jump out and die, or else you're gonna be spending the night in a locker or basket. I wouldn't mind as much if the game did a better job when it came to how it treats saves. See, usually if a game does something like this where I die as a result of its shoddy programming, it doesn't really bother me if it's as simple as respawning right back where I was and going on my merry way. But for some reason, and I genuinely have no idea how nobody working on the game didn't realize how obnoxious this was, but the game does not auto-save. Throughout the map there are these little helpy stations where you can save your game. Minor tangent, but it really bothers me how you can't simply click on them to see if you have to hold down the E key for like 5 seconds. That shit gets really tedious after a while. But I digress. Because the game doesn't autosave, it means that I had a lot of moments such as the segment with the sun and moon at the daycare. Where I played through his entire section, which took around 15 minutes of me trying to find all those generators with them frequently glitching out in the background. But I finally passed it, only to walk over to the exit, have it instantly play a cutscene where the other animatronics are alerted, and I'm expected to immediately know to jump into Freddy who's behind me, and if I don't do that within like 5 seconds, I get killed by Chica who spawns right next to you. So I died. This was my realization that the game did not autosave, and I had to go and watch the entire cutscene and play through the mission again. But I guess that's my fault for not knowing that the game would throw me into a do or die situation right after an already pretty tedious mission. I get it. In a game like this where a lot of your choices in the moment can affect the way the rest of it plays out, you're gonna want to give the player the option to go back to a previous save, and not auto-save over whatever it is they're doing. But there had to have been an easier way to go about this. Easiest solution in my eyes? Give the players a choice. It's as easy as that. When I press start game, why not have a little window pop up? Eh, uh, bro, you want the game to auto-save? You know, be warned this will put you in a point of no return, but if you don't really care about getting every single ending, then, you know, just go ahead and enable it. It'll help you a lot. Would that have been so hard? All this dumbass no auto-save shit makes me do is make sure that I'm saving at every single moment possible. Even if I've made no progress or don't know where to go, I still find myself saving every single time I see one of these, as the game is so unpredictable in what it's gonna throw at you. Especially with the shitty AI and these lame hide-and-seek moments. This becomes even more dumb after 6am, where the game COMPLETELY disables your ability to save and expects you to beat the rest of it in one go or else you'll be sent all the way back to 6am. Who the fuck thought that replaying hours worth of gameplay was a good idea? Why is this here? To artificially extend the playtime of your pitifully short game? I shouldn't even need to discuss why this is a lame idea that shouldn't have been implemented, but I'll leave it at this. Steel Wool, if you expect me to play your game perfectly without dying, then I expect you to function perfectly, where there's not always the possibility that a robot will spawn right beside me and kill me in an instant, sending me all the way back to the beginning. And it's a shame because the game really shines when it does anything but these dumb stealth moments. There was a mission where I had to explore this area for a security badge, with shut off endoskeletons scattered around, with each time I hit a button turning a batch of them on, who will constantly move and come after you when you're not looking at them. This was a genuinely fun mission where I felt like I was being challenged, and I had to use my brain to work out the exact rotation I would need in order to escape. Or the moments akin to the original Five Nights at Freddy's, where I was locked in an office and had to press switches to keep the robots out. Even if all challenge was removed as I ran out of power but found out just hiding in the corner meant no animatronic would come to kill me. But still, I wish the game had more stuff like that. Hell, even just doing something as simple as giving each animatronic a boss fight would have worked to switch up the gameplay. I did the Monty's Golf segment first and I was really happy with it. After a boring slog through a ton of staff bots, I was presented with a truly fun, challenging boss, where I had to run around avoiding Monty while using these guns to fill up a dunk tank. I thought each animatronic would have a moment like this, but when I proceeded to do the decommission Roxy moment, I found out all I was doing was a bunch of fetch quests. Go grab a cart. Oh no, the cart doesn't have a head. Go grab a head. Oh no, the head is broken. Go fix the head.
Now I fixed the head. Okay, I agree it. Now I return the head to the cart. It's like, does that, does that, does that sound fun? I thought all this would be worth it, as I'd get a ride around in the go-kart trying to hit down Roxy Brian Griffin style. But no, we just got a 10 second cutscene that does the fun part for us. It's not challenging, it's not fun, and most importantly, it's not scary. I think at this point they've really given up on trying to make these games scary. They're way too obsessed with their memes and lame jokes to try and be unabashedly frightening. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's weird to say, but this is basically a kids franchise at this point. But I don't know, I kinda like the quiet and dull atmosphere the series used to have with its first four entries. I think giving the animatronics personalities was a big turnoff for me. I liked that there were these almost lifeless killing machines, who weren't killing you because they wanted to, but because they were being forced to. It was part of their programming, you know? But once you remove that whole lifeless aspect to them, I don't know, I feel to really find them all that scary anymore. Especially given how clean and nice everything looks. This is just a personal thing, of course. Objectively speaking, the voice talent all did a stellar job of their performances. Especially the star, Kellen Goff, who did an amazing job as Glamrock Freddy, you can tell he really gave it his all. But when it comes to the other three, I just can't be scared of them when they pace around every room shutting the same two lines of dialogue over and over again, as I use my cameras to watch them continuously walk into a wall. Speaking of the Faz Watch, it has this, what was intended to be at least, handy feature where you can use cameras around the pizza plex to get a view of most rooms. It's not only a callback to the original formula for the games, but also gives you a good idea of what animatronics are around you that you may not be able to see, therefore you can plan your route accordingly. Is what I would be saying if it actually helped with that. Don't get me wrong, when you already have a good understanding of your surroundings and how each bot operates, this is a useful feature. Only issue is you're oftentimes using this in a room that you've only seen briefly from a first person perspective, so unless you can see Gregory somewhere in it, it's very hard to apply what you're seeing to where you actually are on the map. Again, this would have been a very easy fix. All they needed to do was add a little icon on the map that represented Gregory and what direction he was facing. But in a game that requires a lot of fast reflexes, I don't want to have to spend minutes wrapping my head around where everything actually is in relation to one another. Another issue is that the cameras show you the room completely unlit and unrendered. Once again, I understand the idea behind this. What's the point in showing you the full room if everything is dark and you can barely see anything? But all it ends up doing in the end is further confusing things, because the way you're looking at the area in real time is not representative of how you're viewing it in the camera. It just, it just looks different enough to disorientate you. And it's a shame, because overall this game actually looks very good. I remember before the game came out, a lot of people, myself included, were throwing judgement towards how certain areas appeared, with slightly off lighting and whatnot. And the response I always saw was, Uh, actually, the game is still in development, it'll look better when it's released. And I have to ask these people if they have any idea how game development works. I have no idea how game development works, but at least understand the basics of, most games end up looking worse when they come out, not better. This is for various reasons. Not only do companies want to show off their game looking great with all these fancy graphics, but also after a while you gotta start considering the performance of a game, you know how well it will run on consoles and such. And something you often realize while doing that, is that you end up having to tone down a lot of the graphical shit in order to get stuff like a consistent frame rate. But even then, despite it not looking anywhere near as good as it did in the trailers, I still think it's a very pretty and colorful game. Visually, it's stunning. I love the way the animatronics look. Their animations are all really nice and expressive, the few cinematic cutscenes look incredible. Again, the environment really kneels that 80s aesthetic. But everything is brought down entirely by the poor performance. Security Breach is very poorly optimized. And that's an understatement. We have minor shit like the game jarringly changing its lighting and rendering style when transitioning from gameplay to cutscenes, there are graphical glitches aplenty, too many to count, and the performance is just fucking dreadful at times. I find it stuttering constantly when loading in new areas. Even when not, the game stuttered and froze and shit, like no, it did not look good. If you want to get an idea of how frequently this game bugs out, just go and watch Markiplier's playthrough. It it's embarrassing, this shit is held together with duct tape and glue. He literally fucked with the final boss so much that the game just gave up and played the ending cutscene. I keep hearing the same shit when in regards to this. They'll patch it! If you look past the bugs, it's actually an incredible game! It was just- it was just rushed, it's not Steel Wool's fault! And I'm sorry, I just don't care. I'm sick of excusing mediocrity. This is the way they decided to release the game, and because of that, I'm gonna judge it for being a broken mess. I'm not gonna look past the bugs, because that's a huge part of the game. If two months from now they release a patch that fixes all these bugs, then cool. But that doesn't excuse them releasing the game in the state that it was. <sighs> what the fuck happened here? I know for a fact that the game was not intended to be released like this. Being the FNAF fanbase, they very quickly tore the shit apart, and found a ton of unused code and assets still hidden within the game. Such as arcade minigames, entire rooms of the mall, cut dialogue, a Vani meter where she could come in and kill you at any point and even hints that you were going to be able to play as her at one point. 
On a Reddit post, Scott Cawthon used the analogy of a kick to describe the development of Security Breach, saying that he told Steelwool that he wanted a kick big by Christmas, but each time he checked in with them, he realized that the kick was way bigger than he expected it to be, and so he either had the choice to let it keep baking or to trim it down and release a smaller one, with him eventually deciding to allow it to keep baking, delaying the game. Since that post, the game suffered another delay by around 9 months. What I have to assume happened is that they continued to get carried away and got overly ambitious with the project, to the point where everyone involved. Because remember, there's a lot more people here than just Steelwool and Scott. Other companies put a huge marketing push behind Security Breach, and I have to assume at one point everyone just realized that it needs to come out now or it'll just continue to get out of hand. So I have to imagine they did what Scott said all that time ago. They looked at what they had, trimmed off as much as they could, and now all we're left with is... Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. A project that after playing it all I could think was... Well, where's the rest of it? What's the deal with Gregory? Why about Vanny? She didn't do anything. Why did they set up Vanny only to do nothing with that? I felt like I was missing something. I experienced everything there was to do in the game, and I still felt like I hadn't even scratched the surface. And that's because I hadn't. All I could do was look at a small piece of what could have been the much bigger and better product. I really hope Steel will learn from all this. Because at its very foundation, there are the ideas for a wonderful game here, and occasionally they manage to execute upon this in the final release. But as it stands, Security Breach is another cautionary tale about the problems that can come with overambition, and not understanding your limits. I mean, hey, at least we got the Among Us meme though, right? Have you ever heard of Among Us, Gregory? <laughs>